The Imphal Plain is the only considerable oasis of flat ground in the great sweep of mountains between India and Burma. A natural halfway house and staging place for any great military movement in either direction between India and Burma. I therefore decided to concentrate four corps in the Imphal Plain and fight a major battle there to destroy the Japanese 15th Army. There can have been few examples in history of a force as reduced, battered and exhausted as the 33rd Japanese Division, delivering such furious assaults, not with the object of extricating itself, but to achieve its original offensive intention. You never allow them to get close to you, but they used to, down on the flat, they used to come out of the buildings and so forth and so on, and they would come round the tank and stick um, different things on it. Japanese had trenches and um, uh, what they call the smaller foxholes and uh, it was very, very dangerous. And the other incident will shock you, but it often happens in this curious war against this curious enemy. It is a part of our troops' experience. A Japanese straggler killed himself to avoid capture. We had the recording gear running when it happened. Along all routes leading to the Chindwin River, whether from Ukru, Imphal, Tamu or the Tedim Road, were found such grisly reminders of the fate of a retreating army. In order to reach the Indian Imphal Plain, about 90,000 Japanese troops had to cross the vast 600-meter-wide Chindwin River and over the 2,000-meter-high Arakan mountain range. However, not one of those soldiers made it to Imphal, but turn around and here along the Chindwin River, tens of thousands of soldiers died of sickness, starvation, or in combat. Many of these bodies are still considered missing and have not yet been returned to Japan. In 1979, I learned of the reality of this rash military strategy when I visited the area for my anthropological work. <laughs> The Battle of Imphal took place along the India-Myanmar border, which is home to a diverse group of tribes. The Bamar, the Shan, the Zomi, and the Naga people are just a few of the tribes that share the region. I've spent my life researching ethnology, traveling to well over 142 countries. I've recorded the lives of many different tribes. In 1979, I visited the mountainous area of Nagaland state of India, and I met some villagers that sang songs in Japanese. These villagers spoke of their memories of the Japanese troops. It intrigued me that Japanese troops had been there. Many times I tried to get here by following the route of the Japanese soldiers, but due to the political instability along the India-Myanmar border, I never could. Now, after nearly 40 years, I have finally succeeded in getting in through Myanmar. The ship that carried us was called the Yarana Pyo, meaning many treasures. The 
38 meters long and 4 meters wide. It was built five years ago using an old Japanese truck engine. At the bow of the ship is a reddish-brown leaf, most commonly referred to as tapie. Wishing for good fortune upon the sea, it is given a drink of water each morning. Shuyejin is a town located on the Chindwin River. At the beginning of the war, the British occupied the area, but they were pushed back by the advancing Japanese troops that arrived there. ตะตะเนี่ยเปิดได้ขาจ้ะတော့ あの、In pursuit of the British troops, the Japanese crossed the river from this village. However, a few months after losing the battle, the monsoon rains had started, and little did the broken troops expect the river to bring forth more suffering. The Japanese troops that appeared suddenly in the lives of the villagers would forever change their peaceful way of life. Hello. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> あの、in just a few months, the mighty will the Japanese troops had shown when they first arrived had almost completely disappeared. <laughs> I 
ตัวนี้ชิกันหมวกอืมบูดาบ่เนี่ยแท้มาดิเนี่ยแท้ว่มีวะราคุยอยู่กาจีดูดิยาวพอบ่ดิดิพี่จ้อพอดิยาหยง
Under the raised floors of the temple, there was once a well, 12 meters deep. As the well was empty, the villagers threw the remains of the Japanese troops into it. ま、我々の先輩であり国を持って戦ってくれた人たちだろうから誰であろうと弔ってあげたいね。別に死にたいと思って死んだ人はいないし戦く戦いたくて来た人もいないと思います。国の命令を受けて指示を受けて国のため家
Atani Bari Nya Setana is said Nai Suyen Atani Miai Jaride. So be the Insilo no. Draw a lay or Hantaset tea and tea melo, Tenijara Bari. Ura how Elupo Elupio Jara. So she said, My war. Moto Hong Teng Hong Tao Bileng Hong Aja Bok Suk the Table El Moon in Falama Taimang to Leo Leo to the Japan Ten and Nong Zui to Do Unguk to a Japan Ten and Bok Yellow Nedanga Nippon Bet China here no Hotan Song is a queen Umpia Waitia Mo Kale Kakopi Teo Hat Yerhopa Mo ตัวเองน่ะอาจจะปาร์เตลมาปาร์ติงอ่ะเนี่ยเบตงเปียเล่นมันหมอของเปียวเองน่ะอย่าปาร์เตลน่ะกู้อ่าอันพอดีตัว
傷病兵の力ではやっぱりこの川は渡れないんですねこう渡れないって東に向かって帰りたいっていう気持ちが強くて、まあ、無念のふるさとも無念の思いで亡くなった人がたくさんいるんでしょうね。33 years after the war, veterans from Japan and 100 villagers gathered the remains of the fallen soldiers. Japan, you go, Larry, put it on. We are the other one. I don't know, you go, Larry, put it on. Do you are lonely? ตรงนี้ตัวอารมณ์แบบเราเอาไปมาไล่ชาไปจ้ะเลยอายุเก่าเลยเพื่อนว่าตัวที่มาเสพไปพี่ลูกจะสงสัยเยอะบ่อยก
and one of them gave his life in the far east. My father, Taiji Urayama, is a Japanese veteran who survived the Impal campaign. Ironically, I married a man from Britain, a country that my father had fought against. My father's regiment was just about to charge towards the British headquarters in Kohima village for a final suicidal attack. At the very last minute, they were ordered to retreat. As a consequence, my father's life was spared. If it weren't for the retreat order, I would have never been born. My father was a changed man when he returned to Japan after the war. Yeah, when I was a childhood, my father used to drink a lot every night drink heavily and sometimes become turn out to be very showing and frustration and become you know sort of violent and what was that all about and that is something to do with the war time that made him think like that my father he used to say he wanted to go back to Burma and Kohima why did he say that When I come to this museum, I'll always feel like I'm visiting a war shrine. Hello. Hello. Hi, Bob. It's been a while. How are you oh, doing? Yeah, lovely. Yeah, it's a pleasure to meet you again. Yeah, how nice. Yeah. yeah. You busy? Countless soldiers went to such a faraway land where everything was so different from their home country. They fought and died on foreign soil. As a human being, I often think about the tragic stories of the soldiers. At the time, Japan believed it was a liberator of Asian countries under Western domination. On the other hand, the British saw Japan as an aggressor of the British Empire. As a daughter of a Japanese veteran living in Britain, I have been torn between the two standpoints. I always get choked up when I stand before the blood-stained military flag. But he says that the re interesting thing is like a reincarnation. Uh -huh. The seven are reborn, and we still, <laughs> we still fight for oh, the right. country. Right. He says. We actually um, would would like to have more Japanese visitors because the story is a complete story, uh, and it's and it's better. It's important not to tell a one-sided part of a two-sided story. So, it, you know, it, we would welcome more Japanese visitors to this museum, that's for sure. In April 1944, my father had travelled from Burma to the Kohima Ridge in northeast India. He crossed the Chindrin River, climbed many jungle mountains during the night and walked on a narrow path which was only 80 centimetres in width. Many soldiers fell from the steep cliffs. This summer, I obtained a special permit from India's state of Nagaland. I was finally able to pay my first visit to Kohima, where my father had fought. My father once said to me, in Kohima, there was no food and no ammunition. How could we fight? And then I'm sure Japanese soldiers really thanked you. And then they had them because they were 
hungry, empty. These eggs are very good for them. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you again. Thank you again. About 1,000 British soldiers are buried in this cemetery. At the same place, over 1,500 Japanese soldiers lost their lives. But sadly, there is no Japanese cemetery. The Kohime village sits in a region where the Naga people have long lived. <coughs> I asked an elder how many indigenous people were killed in the war. He said, no one knows. ボンカスドシ、ハポバポンモエ。I found a school that had been built by the Japanese army, whose aim was to teach the Japanese language to the local population, right after their arrival at this village. I met an elder of this area who used to go to the very same school. Surprisingly, he still remembers some Japanese language and a song. Or the Japanese night time is very shouting and to attack the Britishers. Britishers, the reinforcement is coming to supply rations, to hostile the Dagas, also giving. There is a monument standing in Chotsoma village which had once sided with the British. After the war, the local villagers built this monument for the many Japanese soldiers who were killed in battle. On the battle sites where the Japanese and the British had once fought, much unexploded ordnance still remains buried and is often found by local villagers. Because the villagers do not understand how dangerous the undetonated objects are, many have been seriously injured or worse. <laughs> I went to Kohima, but look, they also suffered. Yes, of course they did suffer, because always the war taken place, not your own country, but somebody else's country. That's what I rediscovered. The Japanese and British troops 
came all the way from faraway lands, marching across mountains. Abruptly, a war started on this land. The villages were utterly destroyed. How do the young people feel about this historical fact? I met many university students in Kohima. Some are studying about the Battle of Kohima. So far, what I've learned is that the Japanese and all they do not want to, they do not wish to talk about this battle since they did not, they were not the heroes of the war. So, but then I was thinking since um, I would like to take this opportunity to ask you if there are any scholars who are working on this very topic, so that I think it would be a good thing to for a collaborative study. That's what. Uh, thank you very much. Yeah. Before I was really apprehensive because uh, what I thought was Nongo people are not really happy with Japanese people because the way Japanese left and they never come back. But now this is a very good opportunity to interact with the young people as well as the uh, academics and, as a, and professor. They are very keen to connect with Japan. So this is a very good opportunity and I think this is a starting point for future. During my stay in Kohima, there was one place that I felt I must visit. The Kohima Cathedral was built with funds raised by the Japanese and British vessels who fought each other on this land. Mr. Masao Hirakubo was one of them, who coincidentally had been the same 31st Division as my father. After his retirement, Mr. Hirokubo worked in Britain for reconciliation. His activities caused controversy since the British veterans were reluctant at first to forgive the Japanese. But he persisted in keeping a continuous dialogue. I met Mr. Hirokubo by chance in Breton. When he left the battlegrounds of Kohima and Burma after the war ended, he promised himself he would help rebuild the region that was destroyed by the war. Since he passed away, now I'm trying my best to carry on where he left off. I finally came to Intan Kohima, where my father fought in 1944. A joint of both Japanese and British veterans, they dared to ask the question of why did I survive? There is because we were dead. On behalf of or in place of their dead comrades, there is something must be done together with the other people, Japanese and British. That's my life and message to you. Thank you very much indeed. When I visited this area, the Kohima epitaph became engraved on my memory and will stay with me forever. When you go home and tell them of us and say, for your tomorrow, we gave our today. If you start feeling or thinking of that, then that giving you a message, yes, we need to do something about it. We have to remember them. I wonder why my father often said he wished to return to Kohima and Burma after the war. This is where my father lives. Oh, 
For the past decade, my father has suffered from dementia and has been living in this nursing home in Tokyo. I often tell my father a story that I had originally heard from him. で、Suddenly, he murmured words which deeply affected me. Then you start re um, engage with them people. The yes, the the people who experienced the war, in their mind, the war was never ended. Most important thing is we have to um, pass on their stories, story telling them how they suffered, how they fought, and then also honor them who died.